thank you for joining me for another video. I'm Alice and I'm a vegan living in Whistler where over time I've learned all sorts of really helpful information that's made being vegan here so easy. So today I'm going to share some of that information with you in the hopes that it's also helpful for you too. Something that will make or break your season, whether it's the summer or whether it's the winter, is making sure that you find your clan, you need to find your people. So as a vegan, this is a massive privilege because in Whistler there is a huge vegan community. One of the first things that I would recommend doing is join the Whistler Vegan Facebook page. This page is filled with over a thousand like-minded people who are really happy to make friends with you, to give you tips and tricks about living locally, whether that means helping you find the right sleeping bag for your tenting trip that needs to be vegan, or whether you want to find the best spots to eat in Whistler, or simply whether you want to meet up with some like-minded people on the mountain. There is a huge support network for vegans living in Whistler and honestly it's where I've met some of my best friends since being here so definitely join that page, you will not regret it. One of my favourite things about that page is they often organise things like potlucks where people say, hey, I really want to meet some friends. Uh, does anyone want to come over to my house? And you all bring a dish. So it's a great way of meeting new people, eating some great food and also learning some more recipes and really making the time in Whistler that you have really special. So you've joined the Whistler Vegans Facebook page and in that page there's loads of incredible people. You'll also often find organisations that regularly post in there and that's where I would say to go to next. I'm sure you're aware that people are vegan for all sorts of different reasons, but mainly I found it's due to the environment, due to animals, or due to your own personal health and trying to improve that. So if you're interested in being vegan for all of those reasons, like I am, then uh, maybe you'll find these organisations and charities that you can get involved with in town in Whistler really very helpful to know about. I definitely did. The list is long, but a few that I've had experience with personally are AWARE, which is Whistler's environmental charity. Um, it focuses on advocacy and letting people know about environmental issues. They run all sorts of really cool events like green drinks on the first Wednesday of every month or film screenings and panel talks and have a great blog on all of the issues that are affecting Whistler when it comes to the environment and wildlife in that area. So definitely worth following them. I've also been volunteering for WAG since I've been here. What they do is they work on rehabilitating injured or abandoned dogs and cats and work on getting them into their forever home. Whistler Naturalist is run by volunteers, they have a Facebook page as well. It's filled with lots of people who are curious about the natural world like you, but it's also filled with some scientists who can help you answer some of your questions. So on the Facebook page you can ask about a weird piece of wood that you found, or a strange mushroom that you saw, or maybe even an animal that you saw wandering in a place you didn't expect. And nine times out of ten somebody who is a bit more informed than you will comment back to your comment and they'll let you know something you didn't know before. The Whistler Naturalists also hold events such as the Fungus Among Us event and the Bio Blitz event. People volunteer thousands of hours and you go out with them and you learn more about your natural environment, whether that's mushrooms or whether that's animals, from bugs to birds, so I'd 100% look out for them. Another great one when it comes to events in Whistler is the Whistler Public Library. They host not only film nights, but also they hold talks with really impressive people like Michael Allen who spent the last 30 years of his life studying Whistler's black bears and he'll come and talk to you about it. They're all completely free and they're really varied. On that note as well, the library does have all sorts of really interesting resources when it comes to books and films about the environment, sustainability and also about the wildlife that's around us and on being vegan too. So if you're looking into being vegan for the first time and you need some resources and you're in Whistler, head to the library. There's some fantastic places you can find some information there. The Reusit Centre supports the food bank and other social services based in Whistler. If you think about it, Whistler is a very transient area. You have people coming and going regularly, often going off to new travels afterwards that involve sunshine and sand. So having to leave behind their ski equipment or the opposite. Um, and they're going into a new ski season and they're leaving behind their summer equipment from rock climbing and things like that. So if you're looking to find cheaper things that have less of an environmental impact, I would 100% recommend going to the Reuse It Centre. There are loads of other groups in Whistler, but some of the other ones I would look out for are groups like Community Foundation of Whistler, Sea to Sky Invasive Species Council, Get Bear Smart, The Food Bank, 
Sea to Sky Clean Air Society. I want to emphasise here that there's all sorts of brilliant organisations and companies that are working in Whistler towards the environment for the animals and also for your own health. So do keep an eye out because there's definitely lots that I've missed in here. Those are just some of the ones that I've had personal experience with or I've heard about firsthand. It's pretty great really, I think, to be in a place that cares so much about its environment that the list is so long when it comes to how many places you can get involved with and learn more from. So you've been on the mountain skiing or snowboarding or maybe you've been biking on the mountain all day in the heat and you need some food. Well, these are some of my favourite places to eat in Whistler. I know sometimes when you travel to different countries or you go to a different place for a while, it can be a little bit unnerving. Will I be able to find the food that I really need to nourish my body? Absolutely in Whistler. When it comes to breakfast, I'd suggest the Green Moustache or Fifi's Bistro. The Green Moustache is one of Whistler's only vegan restaurants and it's the only 100% vegan, 100% organic restaurant. They've got some fantastic buckwheat waffles. They've also got some brilliant chili for lunch as well. Fifi's Bistro, on the other hand, is pretty good if you have some friends that aren't really keen on eating anything vegan but want to come and join you for breakfast because it's got some great omni options and the vegan options are beautiful, so it's enough to convince any non-vegan that maybe they should give it a try. For lunch, their cauliflower sandwich might not sound great, but it is so good. A great thing to remember when you're going around Whistler, even when you're eating out, is to say, look, I'm a local, do you do a local's discount? Some places 100% do. The Naked Sprout has got some good vegan options. On the mountain, you're fairly limited with options, but do head to the Raven's Nest on Creekside Side, because there is a vegetarian restaurant which is vegan friendly too. The Velvet Underground is a great option. It's in Function Junction, so a little bit further outside of the village. It's a pretty innovative space and it's only recently gone vegan. They serve a really great vegan cheese platter, but they don't only serve food. Amy also sells vintage clothes there, as well as other really sustainable, cruelty-free products from nail varnish to jumpers to refillable soaps. Another great thing to know is that they also host really awesome events there, including talks like this one from my nutritionist friend Janelle, telling people about vegan nutrition. So really I think you're missing out if you don't know about this place. If you like flavours from around the world, then I'd recommend going to the Fairmont's Mallard Lounge. They have a great green curry. If you know someone who works at the Fairmont, they can get you a vent discount at some of the restaurants there. Or you could go over to Harajuku. Harajuku is one of my favourite places in the whole of Whistler. I think I've probably eaten there more than anywhere else because price-wise, it's a little bit better. And not only do they do a great vegan sushi, it's called the Rock and Roll, and oh my goodness, it's rock and rolling delicious, but they also do a great ramen deep fried brussels sprouts and the agadashi tofu. Incredible. I'd recommend going to Alta Bistro. It's a French bistro just on Main Street. It's a bit fancier and it's delicious. It can be a little bit on the pricier side, but if you go during the off season, that is usually at the end of April and May time, and sometimes at the end of, like just towards the beginning of the winter season as well, so that's October, November time, they do do some deals which makes it a bit more affordable. So if you can't afford it year round, then wait until those times and make a date to go because it's really tasty. Every Monday is Meatless Mondays at the Cure Lounge and their food is really, really tasty. It's over towards Creekside by Nita Lake Lodge. If you're looking to try something fancy and you're willing to pay a little bit more, then that's a good choice for you. If you're in Creekside and you want something a bit cheaper, you've got Samurai Bowl and you've got Creek Bread. Creek Bread has got this beautiful vegan pizza. There's a couple of new places that I've heard incredible things about in town and that's Bread Organic Sourdough, which is 100% vegan and 100% organic, as well as this place called The Raven Room. I haven't given either of them a try yet, but I can't wait to try them out. I really want to emphasise that there's lots of other places that you can eat in Whistler, because for dinner there's especially loads of options, even some that don't necessarily advertise vegan options on their menu. They definitely, definitely have some, so just maybe call ahead if you're not entirely sure, and they will be able to cater for you 99% of the time. A lot of people ask me if it's expensive to live in Whistler as a vegan, and the answer is yes, but not just because you're vegan, but because Whistler is really expensive, like ridiculously expensive. Like a cucumber can cost you $4, sometimes more. I know, 
If you want to avoid the expensive food in Whistler, then I would recommend on your way into Whistler, maybe popping into one of the nearby supermarkets in Vancouver or in Squamish and doing your big supermarket shop maybe once every two weeks. But that can be difficult and is definitely not an option for everybody. So when it comes to convenience and shopping in Whistler and places nearby that you can get a bus to, these are your options. If we're talking about Whistler Village, your only two real options are the IGA and the grocery store. Both are very, very expensive. They're at a premium because they're in the village, but you can definitely get some organic and also vegan food from these places if you want to. The IGA, that is the one that's got the most variety and where you'll find the most options for you. But if you're willing to go a little bit further out, these are some of the other places I would say you need to keep an eye out for. In town, if you're looking for supplements, there's a place called Quantum. So Quantum does give you all sorts of supplements, including things like vitamin B12, which you should be taking if you're a vegan, but a place that gives you both the food and also the supplements is Nesta's Market. It is again a little bit more on the expensive side but you can get all of those things that you need there in one place so really arguably you could say it's worth your while. If you're looking for a cheaper option the independent is really where you want to go. It's over in Rainbow so a little bit of a bus ride away but it's significantly cheaper. If you're willing to spend a little bit more and you're looking for really organic and natural food, then that's where you want to head over to Olives. That's in Function Junction. It's right next to the Green Moustache over in that side and right next door to uh, the Velvet Underground as well. So if you're looking to go and get some food there, uh, you can pop in there for your groceries and then maybe pop into the Velvet Underground and get some pre-prepared lunch if you like. So those are your main options when it comes to getting food in Whistler. Hopefully you're getting the idea right now that being vegan in Whistler is not a new or a difficult thing. In fact, moving towards a more sustainable environment that looks after the planet is definitely something that seems really important to Whistlerites. So, being vegan seems really quite welcome. Here's some pretty cool Whistler related vegan facts that I've learned since being here. Did you know that Canada's first ever vegan vending machine started right here in Whistler? It's 100% organic and run by the Green Moustache who's just launched another one at the Lionsgate Hospital in Vancouver. Their aim is to make healthy food as accessible as possible and use food to heal the body. Or that there's not one but two former Olympians making big waves in the vegan world in Whistler. One is Olympic medalist Christy Richards, who runs her very own dessert making company that serves a few of the cafes in Whistler. And another former Olympian and vegan herself, Julia Murray, is living in Whistler, is active on the vegan page and also creates her own muesli as well as her own website, which is based on all sorts of recipes that she really likes and can make and can inspire you to make by going on there, but also uh, lots of places that she's eaten in town, living in Whistler, and can recommend to you too. So if you're looking for more inspiration outside of this vlog today, then definitely go and check that out. It's written by a former Olympian who is living here in Whistler, which I think is pretty cool. That's it from me, thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been helpful for you and if you have any questions, comments, or anything to add, because inevitably I will have missed something, please put it in the comments. If you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome for me and like too, if that's what you'd like to do. I just want to emphasize here as well that there are so many amazing people and places doing great things when it comes to the vegan community and interests to vegans here in Whistler that I inevitably have missed a few out. So if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments, Sharing is caring and maybe I'll try it and include them in a future video. But for now that's it from me, thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you hopefully in a great place to eat here in Whistler having a nice tasty vegan snack. Bye!